Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. After we spent some time looking at what a process looks like in memory in our last video, it's now time to consider the whole lifetime of a process from startup time until it exits. We know that a process is brought into memory via one of the exact family of functions, and having written our fair share of C programs, we know that we begin in main, right? But we also already saw that main is a bit special. If you type man main in the terminal, you won't get a manual page. If you grab your system headers for a forward declaration of the main function, you won't find it. So where is main defined? This is where we go to the standards. And this time it's not POSIX, but we're looking at the C programming language standard. The name main and whatever prototype it may have, after all, is a programming language specific thing. And the C standard has this to say. The function called at program startup is named main. The implementation declares no prototype for this function, it shall be defined with a return type of int and with no parameters. Specifically, it says that there are multiple prototypes possible. Here is one with two parameters, referred to as argc and argv, which we are used to. But then it goes on to say, or in some other implementation defined manner. Which is wonderful, because that means we can have other ways of calling main. Hooray! But let's go with the broad guidance given to us by the standard. We know in program startup this main function is to be called. So, when one of the exact function is called, the kernel needs to start the program somehow. For that, it calls a special startup routine, which sets up the process space, puts the command line arguments and the environment into the right place, etc. etc. We know that argc is passed to main as the number of command line arguments, and that argv is an array of pointers to the arguments, including argv0, the name of the program. We also know that we are guaranteed that this array is null terminated so we can iterate over it easily. Ok, all those are nice words, but let's observe this in the wild, shall we? Here's a trivial program that prints out the address of main. We're compiling it with dash g to enable debugging symbols and using the C89 standard instead of the default GNU C11 standard. As a result, we get a bunch of warnings, which, unlike at any other time when we write code in this class, we are allowed to pass. Note in particular that we are getting a warning about our main function not returning a value, even though its function prototype promised it would return an integer. All we're doing is print the address of main, which turns out to be 496a hex. So this must be the entry point for the program. Let's check. Here we use the readelf utility to print the headers of the executable. Don't worry too much about all the output. We'll revisit the elf format and the readelf utility in a future lecture. But for now, notice that it has a line noting the entry point address, which it notes to be 405b0, not 496a. So wait, our program doesn't start at main then? Let's ask our good friend the debugger to observe what's going on when we run the program. First, we set a breakpoint at the entry point address, so we can see where we end up. Next, we change our layout to show us both the common registers as well as the assembly of the executable. We run the program and reach our breakpoint inside a routine called start at address 405b0. That routine populates a few registers and then calls underscore 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 start. Let's single step. Ok, now we are in underscore 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 start at 400.785. That routine does a whole bunch of things it seems. At some point it calls things like at exit and libc init before eventually it calls main, down here, 
calling address 496a, as we had observed from the program itself. If we now step, we break again right as we enter main. Here, in register RDI, we see the first argument to our function, argc, with a value of 1. And in register RSI, we see the second argument to our function, the argv pointer. The first element in this array, argv0, is then a pointer to the program string. Now within main, we see a call to printf. Let's break there too. Okay, we step, and now we're in printf. This function comes from libc, so we don't get all our debugging symbols, but we can print the function arguments given to printf by inspecting the argument registers again. Examining the memory address in register rdi as a string gives us the first argument. Printing the second value as hex will give us 0x496a, the address of main, which was what we were going to print. Now, if we continue, we leave printf and are back in main where we now see the value 20 in the RAX register, used to hold the return value of the last function call. After returning from printf, main now returns itself. And we are back in underscore 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 start, which had called main earlier. Continuing from here, we exit the program, and as we can see, the return value of our program becomes whatever was left in the register, 20 in this case. Okay, so we saw that our program didn't really start at main. It started in something called start. Where do we find that? Let's look in the source tree. There, you will find an architecture-dependent assembly file under libcsu, where csu stands for C startup, in the file crt0s. crt stands for C runtime, and this file contains the initial entry point of the program, the underscore start assembly routine, which, as we see here, calls the underscore 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 start function. Now that function is a regular C function found in the crt 0 commonc file. It takes two arguments, a function pointer and a struct ps strings. The struct ps strings is found at the top of the stack and is used to locate the arguments and environment strings as we had previously observed when we looked at the process layout in memory. So the underscore 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 start function uses these strings to set up the extern char star star environment, as well as the underscore underscore prog name string, which is used by the get prog name library function. Further down, we see calls to add exit, which we'll see in our next video lecture, and the libc init function before, eventually, finally, it calls exit, passing it the return value of main, to which it passes the argc, argv, and environment pointers. Which of course means that main is not defined as being with no parameters, nor as having two parameters, but as an implementation defined function taking three parameters. We'll get back to this whole NFP business in another video. But okay, so our entry point is underscore start, not main, and underscore start calls main. Can we circumvent main? Here's a program that has a function called foo, which returns an int, and which obviously isn't called at all. So when we compile this program, 
we get the same warnings as before. And of course, the same behavior as before too. But there's a switch to tell the compiler to use a different function as the program entry point. Let's pass dash "-e foo", thereby telling the compiler and linker to create an executable that jumps straight into foo instead of main. We still get the same warnings, but when we run the program, we don't enter main. Instead, we directly call foo. Only after that we sag fault. That doesn't look good. Let's compare the behavior between the two invocations. With a normal executable, we break at the address of the start routine and then inspect the frame. We see our instruction pointer and the address of the start routine. We step into the underscore underscore start routine as before and find the instruction pointer at that address. Next, we step again and break again in main. But note that here, our saved rib register containing the return address to which we will jump when we are done with this function is now 408 ED, a few bytes down from the starting address of the frame for our underscore 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 start. So now when main completes, we grab the address from the saved rib and find ourselves back in underscore 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 start. After that, we step and exit the program. Okay, now let's compare this to the execution of the program when we use an alternate entry point. Now our entry point is 409BA. So let's break there. We run the program break it 409BA and find ourselves immediately in foo. No start or underscore underscore start this time. Our instruction pointer is 409BA as expected. Our saved rib is the uninitialized 0x1. So if we step, we get to the printf, after which we reach our return statement. Where do we return to? Let's look at the saved rib register. 0x1. And so, at the end of the function, we are now trying to jump to memory location 00001, which is not a valid address in our process, and so we get a segmentation violation. So our program with an alternate entry point sec falls because it tries to return to an invalid address unlike a program set up with underscore start, which has everything properly aligned to return from the main program. Can we figure out a way to jump to an alternate entry point without sec faulting afterwards? Recall that underscore 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 start doesn't just call main, it calls exit with a return value from main. Let's try to exit ourselves. So here's a new function, bar. Unlike foo, it doesn't return, it calls exit. Let's give that a try. Hey, that worked! And we got the correct exit value too! Let's take a look how that worked. Here we grab our entry point address. We break at 409BA, but also break and exit. We run it and inspect the frame and find our saved rib register to be 0x1, just as with foo being our entry point. But this time, after printing our message, we don't return. We call exit. Exit's frame looks like so. It has its own instruction pointer somewhere in Lipsy, and a saved rib pointing to where we were called from inside of bar. So if we now step, 
we exit, which is exactly what the exit function is supposed to do. That is, we don't return at all, so the contents of the saved rib register don't matter, and which is why we didn't segfault, even though we didn't use the start routine as the entry point. All right, time for a break here. We spend enough time talking about how a program starts. We learned that the entry point is defined by the compiler linker, meaning we can change it. We saw that there is a C startup routine that sets up the environment and moves the command line arguments into place, etc. And we saw why main always returns an int. It passes this value on to exit. So all in all, our program doesn't simply start with main, but instead we notice the default entry point underscore start, which calls underscore 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 start, which calls exit with its argument being the return value of main. That is, we also saw how the program exits and returns, but we'll spend a bit more time on that in our next video segment. Until then, cheers!